Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Back with top 10 moments of Fernando Alonso's brilliance. brilliance. And first thing first, I did see some news in F1. I did see... My bad. So I, I did see Max for stopping getting getting fined 50k for I think I think it was an engine problem or like a wing problem. I, I'm not really sure what happened. I, I got look more into it, but I did see he got fined out. And I also saw Lewis Hamilton getting DQ from like qualifying and stuff like that. So I guess it does that just make him start at P20? Like is he just gonna start at P20? I guess for tomorrow. Also. The Bingos don't play tomorrow. I may live stream tomorrow. I may live stream tomorrow, 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. F1 race. I may stream. I may stream tomorrow. Yes, sir. So 50-50 chance. 50-50 chance. Um, so be on the lookout for that for tomorrow. But I may stream during the race. You know, talk to you guys and all of that. And now also, last thing, last announcement. So last night, I was watching F1 on my phone. And I came across this girl. She was she made a video about pronouncing all the names and all that. Shout, shout out to her. I think I think her name is like girls who like F one something like that. Shout out to her. But I watched her. I, I watched the video like five six times. Like <laughs> I was like Chad, you gotta get the names pronounced. And I was like, I'm fucking retarded. Like this is the way I've been saying the names the whole time. It's not Sergio Perez. It's Sergio. It's Sergio. Sergio Perez or something similar as that. Botas, um, Schumacher, like I get, like I said, it's really just like the accent, you know what I mean? Like, he got the emphasis on it, but, and then Charles Leclerc, oh, oh, we, but anyway, let's go into it, top 10 models of Fernando Alonso is brilliant, let's go and start the video, don't forget to like the video and sub as well, and then, okay, I, didn't Juan Pablo Montoya do this? Like Danga Patrick? Kyle, I know, I, I think both, I think Danga Patrick and Juan Pablo, Juan Pablo Montoya both did NASCAR. So I just wanted to just, just bring that out. Just want to bring that out, you know, out there. I've never seen anything like it. This wasn't simply one of the gutsiest seat of the pants overtaking maneuvers in F1 history. It was also one of the most symbolic. Fernando Alonso, the rising star of Grand Prix racing, passing Michael Schumacher's Ferrari, Schumacher. his gleaming championship crown he was about to claim at Suzuka's most revered. That was smooth. He just took corner. off. Passes like this at 320 kilometers an hour around the outside simply weren't supposed to happen at 130R. Asphalt Look how smooth he just special. did that. Doesn't even begin to describe Oh it. my god. On this trade. He closed me the door in the inside. I'm going to 130R. I was in the outside, flat out and uh, really risky. But uh, as I said before, there was nothing to lose today. Okay, yeah, that's a good chance. Fernando Alonso's last years in Formula One were full of frustration and struggle against uncompetitive machinery but also proved him to be a warrior and a driver who never gave up. Dang, the 2018 good. Azerbaijan Grand Prix began with the McLaren driver setting his sights on a rare points finish. But his hopes were crushed just a few seconds into the race when he was caught in a collision that punctured both his right-hand tires. Ooh. By the time he reached turn 15, they were down to the wheel rims. Unbelievable. You take care of corner one, corner two, and they crash into you. You're stupid. <laughs> the 36-year-old dragged his car back to the pits in an unbelievable exercise of tenacity and driving skill. How did he do Narrowly that? Narrowly avoiding running into the wall on entry, but suffering extensive damage in the process. After checking the car was structurally safe, the team sent Alonso back out with new tires and front wing. He'd lost 20 points of downforce equivalent to half a second a lap. But despite major damage to his car's floor, and thanks to a safety car bunching the field back up, he skillfully fought his way back through the field to finish an incredible seventh. That's cr <laughs> that's crazy as hell. Dude's tires were f. Dude's tires were screwed. My man wheeled his way into the pit. I, I think so. Like his front wing, whole new two set of tires, and managed to finish seventh. Woo! 
That's that's incredible. Hey, I can already tell dude's a stud. I can already tell dude's a stud. To arrive at your home race as the reigning world champion will always be memorable. And the roaring grandstands worked their magic because that afternoon in Barcelona, Spain's first Formula One world champion took the victory in dominant fashion with a peerless lights to flag win to increase his championship lead over Michael Schumacher. Yeah, that's crazy Fantastic. because Senna did that as well. Senna went back to uh, Brazil. In front of my people, my supporters, I think was uh, the best feeling so far, I think, in a Formula One car. The win was Alonso's 12th consecutive podium finish. And he would give his fans much more to celebrate as he won his second world championship at the end of the season. I, I always say, if you if you come back home to your home country, you have to win that guy. That should be the most important Tension race to win. Yeah, win it to the in your 2010 home country. Singapore Grand Prix. The championship lead at this point of the season could have been taken by any one of five drivers: Mark Webber, Lewis Hamilton, Jensen Button, Sebastian Vettel, and. Alonso. Sebastian Vettel. The intensity of the fight between Alonso and Sebastian Vettel was never more obvious than at the start, with Alonso forcefully countering Vettel's getaway. Mm. Hey. Alonso leads. Back comes Hamilton, though, into the first corner. Vettel had a slight pace advantage in his Red Bull, but although he put Alonso under relentless pressure in the closing laps, the Ferrari driver's focus never faltered. The young German did his utmost to induce an error from Alonso, but the Spaniard used every inch of road to hold on and crossed the line to win by a margin of just 0.293 seconds. Still the closest finish in Singapore to date. We did it, we did it. Grande, grande. Super guys, thank you, thank you very much. Siete migliori ragazzi, vai! Woo! Alonso, who had won from pole, led every lap and set the fastest lap. His only Grand Chelem in Formula One. Yeah, and a 25th victory. I, I've always thought that level, too. Like, if you win the pool, Lauder like you basically won the race, damn near. Yeah, like, I've seen that a couple of times. See, like, I've seen home. a lot of times watching these drivers. It seems like when you win the pool, like when you start off in P1, you end up winning the race. So that's just me. I'm like I said, I, I, I'm likely wrong. That's just something I have you know, noticed. In 2003, already as F1's youngest pole sitter and podium finisher. But he would leave having recorded another milestone. Starting from pole once again, the then 22 year old raced into the lead Honey, with Kimi Raikkonen doing his best to stay in touch. Come on, Kimi. With 10 laps to go, Alonso asserted his dominance by lapping the reigning world champion Michael Schumacher. And as the checkered flag fell, he was 17 seconds clear. And Fernando Alonso <laughs> wins his first Grand Prix, Bro, and he becomes what? the youngest man. To win a Formula One Grand Prix. 22, Eclipsing a record crazy. set by Troy Rutman at Indianapolis in 1952 as the youngest winner of a round of the Formula One World Championship at the time. Hey, the respect. 2007 European Grand Prix was a race riddled with spins, stranded cars, and heated disputes. And one Fernando Alonso excellently mastered. The race began and ended with rain falling, a heavy downpour forcing the race to be stopped early on after multiple God crashes. Lee. Upon the restart, the race was a battle fought with Felipe Massa and Alonso, with the Brazilian holding the advantage. The Ferrari was faster than the McLaren in the drying conditions at the Nürburgring, but with eight laps to go, the rain fell again, and Alonso began to reel him in. He was decisively quicker than Massa and tried to pass the Ferrari at every corner. He can't do Finally, it. on lap 56, he got around the outside, seizing the inside for the following corner and toughing it out as they banged wheels in a perfectly judged example of controlled aggression. He won, and his post-race quarrel with Massa was a byproduct of racing adrenaline. What we'd witnessed was Alonso's mastery uh oh, fight night! <laughs> fight night! And pure racing. Fight we night. Touch each other two times, and uh, you know, I apologize. Apologize to to him, maybe, <laughs> because I was so was so stressed when I finished the race. Because we nearly he ain't trying to talk to him though. He ain't trying to fuck with him right now. Now I try to to enjoy the victory and, and forget everything. 
Fernando Alonso became well known for extracting more from the machines he drove than they should possibly have been able to offer. And that's exactly what he did at the 2012 Malaysian Grand Prix, at the wheels of a Ferrari F2012 that struggled to get into the final part of qualifying. A tropical storm loomed over the starting grid as the lights went out. Alonso climbed from 8th to 5th on the first lap. Decent start from Lewis Hamilton. Michael Schumacher is getting swallowed up a bit there by Mark Schumacher. Webber. Hamilton to the extreme inside of the track. Fernando Alonso is getting caught out and bogged down a bit. With the rain intensifying, the safety car was soon out. Yeah, I'm about to say. The race restarted nearly an hour later with drivers on mandated wet tyres. Yeah. But by the time the green flag was waved, the track was ready for intermediates. Most made the right strategy choice and pitted immediately. Sauber's Sergio Perez and Alonso among them. Perez was having the race of his life and running first. But Alonso used his experience to overtake the Mexican and build up a six second lead. As the track dried, Perez charged up behind Alonso, whose tires were now fading fast. But before the Sauber could attack, Alonso judged the conditions to perfection by coming in again for dry tires and reopening a five second lead by pitting a lap before his rival. The Sauber was much quicker than the Ferrari and Perez was taking a second per lap out of Alonso's lead. But the Mexican made the mistake Alonso was waiting for, running wide and allowing the Spaniard to build the gap back up again and seal a remarkable victory Smart. in a car which had no right hey. <laughs> to be on the top step of the podium. Fernando this Smart is one really. of the most beautiful, this is one of the most, most beautiful. We are so proud of you, so proud of you and of the team. That, hey, he's smart, he's Alonso very smart. Alonso arrived at the 2005 Fernando's San Marino very, Grand very Prix smart. as championship leader, having won two of the first three Grand Prix for Renault. However, Ferrari was still the favourites at Imola, although Schumacher was only starting 13th after a mistake in qualifying. For the race, Ferrari filled his car with more fuel than any of the other front runners, and he lapped at record speed for several laps longer to brilliantly charge into a podium position. By contrast, Alonso's car was wounded from the start, with his engine down on power. Damn. He'd been running second until Kimi Raikkonen retired on lap nine, gifting the lead to Alonso. Thanks to some skillful driving and careful strategy, Alonso kept the lead into the late stages of the race. However, he was being hunted by the best of the best. And Schumacher was relentless, He's pressing right Alonso ass. at every corner trying to force the young Spaniard into a mistake. But Alonso held his ground against the living legend on his way to a famous victory. It was the changing of the guard and the race which proved Alonso was world champion material. That is a start. Alonso's that is second a victory on start. home soil didn't come as easy as the first, but was perhaps the finest example in Alonso's career of how his relentless pace and aggression could make the impossible possible. Fifth on the grid, he was soon third after one of his trademark lightning starts, performing two memorable passes around the outside of fellow world champions Kimi Raikkonen and Lewis Hamilton. Around the outside, there goes Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton wheel to wheel. It's Rosberg from Vettel, and now Alonso slots into third place ahead of Lewis Hamilton, who's lost two places by the fourth turn, and almost has Kimi Raikkonen all over his rear wing. Ferrari's strategy that day was key, as they had opted to four-stop once more than any other team was considering. In an era where the perceived wisdom was entire preservation, the Scuderia were turning things on their head by doing completely the opposite. But to make the play work, Alonso would have to push like he'd never pushed yeah. before for the whole race to overcome the time lost in the extra stop. Having undercut Sebastian Vettel on lap 10, he passed Nico Rosberg for the lead as the grandstands embraced him in raptures. He went on to record an emotional 30-second career win in front of his adoring home fans. Indeed, Although again, nobody could have imagined it at the time, it would be his final Formula One victory and unquestionably one of his very best. You feel the support from everybody. There is a... Uh... Uh, every single member of the Dizzy team star. taking care of every detail Dizzy because star. we want to do well it's here in front of our fans, man. in front of uh, so many people supporting Ferrari. 
Number one. What? There's what nothing number one? like winning at home. But to do it starting from 11th position and systematically climbing your way up the grid, overtake after overtake, is the stuff of legend. Few would have predicted the result in the early stages as Vettel streaked away from the field from pole position. But in the midfield, Alonso was dominating Valencia's street circuit. He was up to seventh by lap 12, and two brutally quick laps before his own pit stop while the leaders in front made theirs promoted him to a virtual fourth behind Vettel, Grosjean and Hamilton. Grosjean. His outstanding Grosjean. performance on track was boosted by several incidents around him. Hamilton's faulty pit stop during oh, the safety Jesus, car period allowed Alonso to take third God, place. Lee, On the restart and propelled by the cheering of his fans, he overtook Roman Grosjean for a second place that Roman immediately Grosjean. became the lead when Vettel retired due to an alternator failure. The ovation was now almost deafening. It was Alonso's 29th victory and one that took him back into the championship lead. In the emotional side, uh, I think this is the best victory because uh, emotions that I felt in the in lap or, or in the podium, I think, uh, is, is nothing to compare. But that most importantly, is. it was yet again the proof of an extraordinary talent that strengthened against adversity and has written a legacy of racing brilliance that will never be forgotten. That is a stud. I, I, I don't know. He just went from 11th. Engine problems taking over that first that number ten that first overtake you did in that in that first scene that overtake was mean that was the meanest overtake I, I I seen that that shit crazy <laughs> that shit was crazy Fernando Alonso wow wow <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Anyway, you guys don't get like a sub. Come down below, guys. Thoughts and reactions. I'll see you guys later.